evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, sisters of the Blog Talk Radio. This is Pastor Dow of the Straightway Truth Radio Broadcast. I'm blessed and glad to have each and every last one of you here on this edition of Straightway Truth. I hope that each and every last one of you have had a blessed day, that you've been productive, um, that your life has had some sort of meaning to it, hopefully, some way, somehow today, and that you've made a difference. No matter where you are, wherever you may be, you've enjoyed yourself and you kept the most high, first and foremost, in your conscience, your thoughts, and your mind. If I'm coming in pretty good, uh, somebody go ahead and give me a radio check. Let me know how I'm coming in. Got bad news. Bad news. I just got finished coming into the office here for a second. And I just looked at um, breaking news. I just posted a video breaking news. Uh, cops in California shoots men, women, and children with rubber bullets and sick a canine dog on a pregnant woman. Um, you'll see it on the YouTube page if you go over there. It's just a little shame. And all because one guy, you know, the cops wanted to question one guy, and the guy took off running, so the cops shot him. Can you imagine that? Man, I tell you what, that is no reason whatsoever at all to be using lawful force. Um, also, we had some of the most bizarre behavior happen this past weekend. Can y'all believe that a guy drove all the way up here from Florida, 10 and a half, 11 hour drive for the sole purpose to hear me say you can move on the land. Can y'all believe that? I don't know him. Nobody knows him. I've never heard of him. He said he'd been listening to me for a whole year. How do you listen to me for a whole year and you become that presumptuous? You know what I did, don't you? I said, I tell you what. Do you remember the interstate that you used to come up here? He said, yes, sir. I said, good. Get on the road and take that one right back. Brothers and sisters, I don't know under what auspice or what spirit people are functioning after today. I, I don't know. I just don't get it. I don't get it. I really, truly don't get it. I'm going to need you to help me. I really, truly am. Um... Because it's sad. What in the world would make people have that type of spirit to where they drop? Hey, Brother Austin is here uh, from South Carolina. And, and I had to have Brother Austin to go over and talk to him and stuff. And I, I tell you what, it's just a sad, sad thing. I, I just don't get it. Oh, boy. You know, if the most high, if the most high don't hurry up and come, we're in some serious trouble. Because the Bible says when he comes. Will he find faith on his earth? And there's just not too much faith operating today. I'm telling you, I, I looked at the young man. I said, first of all, number one, I don't know you and you don't know me. And I said, I tell you what, you ain't going to like how I'm going to respond to you on this either because I tell you what to presume and assume is utterly amazing to me. I don't get it. I really, truly don't get it. You know, I tell people to know the Israelites, to get around the Israelites, and, and to um, develop a relationship with the Israelites for a reason. We got Israelites down there in Florida, but he, he didn't want to uh, associate with them. Said he listened to me a whole year. You tell you what he just got finished doing. He just got finished lying. And then it says that, that these police, I'm going back to California where they open up fire on the citizens of protest. You know, you ever notice you don't see stuff like that in Tennessee? Um, because, hey, the people down in Tennessee, they go to the plaza, they protest and all the other stuff, but you don't see the police jumping cocky in ride gear on the on the people in Tennessee. And run reason, and Arizona, um, and, and places like that. You know the reason why? Because over close to a quarter, or if not half the population in each one of those states all carry guns. And in Texas, They'll do it with isolated incidents with individual people and stuff, but when you're dealing with a whole neighborhood, you just don't never know what type of fire you may get in that. I'm telling you, California is unarmed, and it's sad. And you can see that when people have power, they will abuse you because power abuses, but absolute power abuses absolutely. And anytime people can exercise power over you by secular government, it makes no difference whether it's right or wrong. They will abuse you simply because they have the power to do it. I tell you what, I'll tell you what I'm seeing is happening. I told you, 
We're getting ready to develop in this country and see a civil war like we ain't never seen before in our life. And we're getting ready to see a crossfire from hell. We're getting ready to see, we are getting ready to see um, a, 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 a serious war. I'm talking about, hey, hey I wonder what the National Guard is going to do. I wonder what the U.S. Army is going to do. I wonder what the Marines going to do when the citizens start to rise up and overthrow this tyrannical government. Because it ain't a matter of if, it's a matter of when. It's going to happen because they're being pushed. Um, and and they they keep pushing. We under this corporate fascist system, and they keep on doing everything they can to push the people, push the people, push the people, and push the people because they they assume they can keep on getting away with more and more and more and more and more. And because they have power, they think that they can just continue to keep on abusing. Um, and I tell you what, I don't know what's going to protect them when somebody decides. To perpetuate what they will call violence and injustices on them. Because you know there's one thing about violence. If somebody decides to shoot you point blank range cold blooded. What are you going to do about it? You can't prepare for nothing like that. That's why I tell people. Especially if you're a part of this ministry. You need to always be on your six. Watching your six. Your P's and Q's. Because you need to always be careful. Usually when saints come here. Uh, unless they're not around us. Um, if they're flying up, the first thing we do, we hand them a trusted firearm to keep on their presence. Or they even have access to a trusted firearm to keep on their presence. Because we're living in a time nowadays, brothers and sisters, that people simply are full of demonic spirits. And these spirits, you, they, they ain't casting out. As a matter of fact, over in the book of Revelations, look what the book says. And, uh, and, and I tell you. Like I've said many, many times before, the worshiping, the worshiping of devils is going to be something that is going to be going on worldwide. Um, is that for the month of July? Is that for the month of June? Brother Steve just sent a communicate that the newsletter has been downloaded 4,173 times. Revelations 9 20 says, and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither could see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented. They look at this for their murders or of their sorceries, nor of for no look at this, nor of their fornication nor of their theft. See, we're living in a time now that people are righteous in their own eyes. They're not going to repent for worshiping devils. They're not going to repent for murdering people. They're not going to repent for sorcery. Uh, they're not going to repent for being in fornication. They're not going to repent for stealing. That's the type of cold, hard, callous, indifferent spirit we're dealing with, brothers and sisters. And I'm telling you right now, you better get this damnable Christian mindset out of your heart and mind. You remember the Most High Yah said he made your hands for war. And there's a time for everything under the sun. There is a time for everything. A time. A time, a time, a time. You know, the, the one of the wise preachers says clearly in the word. Clearly in the word. And I want to read it to you. It says, to everything there is a season and a time. To every purpose under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rent and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. Everything, brothers and sisters, has a time. And we're getting close to a, fulfilling a lot of these sayings in this time because things are changing right before our very eyes.
Well, I just don't know. I don't know how to call it nowadays. One thing I can do, call, is tell you to get out of these Christian churches because you ain't going to learn nothing there. They're going to police you. Um, they're going to keep you dumb, docile, dormant, demoralized, or you don't even know if you're coming and going. And that's just the truth. You have to understand, you can control an ignorant population. Can't imagine people go to church just to get happy and then what? What do you do all week long? Well, where's your relationship with the Father? Huh? What, what about it? I'm going to go ahead and open up the phone line because I'm going to cut the broadcast a little short here tonight. Uh, we've been working hard on that pavilion today. And um, we're almost done. I think we may have one more day on the pavilion, just like I figured. Um, maybe a half a day tomorrow. A little bit more painting and stuff to do, and I have to run to get some things. But we're going to, um, I'm going to show you a, a, a video of the finished product. Uh, we had Brother Austin and Brother Brandon. Um, as well as Brother Alex from um, Alabama, I mean from Georgia, uh, come up and they all helped us today on the pavilion. And we thank the Father for it. I think in the morning what I may do is get a picture of all the saints who put a hand in on helping getting this pavilion done. Um, whether they um, lifted one pebble, one rock, still put them in there. Hallelujah. We're going to Texas. Call the number 214-214. This is Pastor Dow. You're on the Straight With Truth Radio broadcast. How may I help you? Oh, my God. Hey, Pastor. How you doing, Greg? Good. I, 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 was, I was told disgusting. I, I was told disgusting the video that I see. I mean, it just seems like it's just getting exponentially worse and worse. It is, brother. I mean, I mean, I mean they shot a... a Oh God! You mean they shot, shot a whole shooting the children, sick a dog at a at, at, at a mom's, the mom's baby? Yeah, yeah, they shooting them with rubber bullets, man, and they um, uh, sick the dog. You can see it clearly. I got the video posted, um, up on on the YouTube page of mine, and it's just it's sad, brothers and sisters. It really, truly is. I tell you, saints, you make sure you get. You make sure y'all just keep yourself prepared for any injustices may t may come because things are just getting off the chain. What the hell is wrong with these police officers? Well, they're full of demons. They're full of devils, and they they have um the power to abuse, so they're abusing, and 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 they are actually trained to be against the people, even though that um, we are their masters, but they don't see it that way. Yeah, just like you, they're psychotic. They'll sit around here and go off on you for no reason at all because you may be in a wrong place. Like they did, like, remember, remember, remember that time I told you about that cop that talked to you that way? Yep, yep. Of course, you wouldn't let that, you wouldn't let a police officer talk to you that way, would you? Well, I mean, they can probably talk that way, but they, they, they may not like how they're going to get talked back to. I promise you that. I tell you what, Greg, I tell you what, Greg, it's just another sign that people need to get out of California. I, I mean, I can't put it any other way. I can't. I'm not in California, Pastor. I'm in Texas. Greg, I know where you at. You're not listening to me. I said it's just a sign that the people need to get out of California. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe you get out of California. Get out. Get out of California. This is just, 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 just bad. Police officers just totally corrupt. Do you, do you hear about that L.A. milkman? No, what happened? Um. Well, he, he, he was selling raw milk, and then he got arrested for some reason. He got put in jail for like at least 24 to 36 hours. He, he, he was sweet deprived, food deprived. Food deprived, water deprived. I mean, the jail was so bad, they were totally nasty. There was even a uh, uh, raw sewage leaking and seeping out through, through the walkways that are, through the walkways in the prison cell. They didn't really do anything about it. Well, you can't expect devils to be just, brother, because they're not. I know it's, it's, it's just signs of the times, brother Greg. It's just signs of the times. That's all it is to it. That's why I call you this bunch of devils. And Christians and writers saying this is all ordained in God. What is wrong with them? What is wrong with them saying this is ordained in God? What, what, what are they going to, 
All you gotta say, police officer, um, uh, uh, murder somebody to ordain the God? <laughs> Probably. Well, that's how they do it, as long as it's not against them, but that's how they do it. The only thing I'm concerned about are the Israelites. I'm only concerned about the Hebrew Israelites that have been born of the water and the spirit and making sure that, that we have our mind in check and know the signs of the times. All right, brother Greg, I'm going right. to the rest of these phone calls. Good to hear from you, my brother. All right, Pastor. Shalom. Shalom. That was brother Greg down in Texas. Um, I tell you, things are escalating, brother and sister. But let me tell y'all something. I, I, I report this news because I want y'all to be informed. Because I want to show y'all what's really truly going on behind the scenes. And that's why I keep telling you, get out of these cities. Get out of these cities. Get out of these cities. Where are these preachers? Where are the pastors at? Where are these watchmen at? They're supposed to see the evil day, to see the signs of the times. And where are they at that should be giving you warning? Where are they? Why come these pastors and these preachers and teachers not warning you people about what's taking place, what's going on, and the signs of the times that Jesus spoke about? Where are they? Huh? I tell you why, they're all blind guys. They're all dumb dogs, and they cannot bark. they greedy, and they love to slumber, and they love to sleep. That's what they are. Hallelujah. And that's the truth. Saints need to get out of California. Get out of New York, too. Get out of the cities. I ain't changing that tune for nothing. It's just a fact. Going to North Carolina, calling number 910. Pastor Dow here. You're on the Straight With Truth Radio broadcast. I may help you. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Pastor Dow, how you doing today? Hey, how are you doing, Brother Jesus? I'm doing well, Pastor Dow. Not too bad, you know. Filled with the Holy Spirit, as always, Pastor Dow. Hallelujah. What you got, Brother Jesus? Uh, not much, Pastor Dow. I just wanted to say hello as always. You know, I want to shout out to the saints out there who are listening and everyone that's straight away. I just want them to know that I love them and all that good stuff. Wow. Um, but uh, I guess uh, I just wanted to add on a little bit to what you were saying earlier about, like, what are the Army, what is the Marines going to do? Uh, and I'll be honest with you, Pastor, like, the quality of Marines I see today is just, like, it isn't the same as, our, as when I was in. You know what I mean? It's just, like, I feel like if it ever does come down, it's probably gonna it's just it's just gonna go along with the flow, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I believe you're right, brother. Yeah, I mean that, that's what I see nowadays with Marines. They just act too immature, and it's just like I'm, like I'm I'm astounded, you know. I see the quality of Marine that I saw when I was in, you know. What I mean, and I thought it was back then, but just it's just even worse now. I think. I understand. I understand. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's just like when I heard about that police shooting, I, I just couldn't believe it either. Um, but other than that, Pastor Dow, uh, I mean, that's another reason. Pastor Dow, like, actually, uh, the only reason I, I, like, I work out as hard as, as hard as I do is because, like, there's no way somebody's going to man manhandle me, you know? Like, when I go to the gym, just so I can get stronger and, uh, just, like, defend myself, because there's no way I'm not going to be, I'm, I'm going to be defenseless, you know? Right, um, right. Uh, because I can't really carry a gun on base or nothing like that, so, like, me, it's like, I'm trying to work out as hard as I can and just stay fit, physically fit, because you don't know what's going to be happening down the line. Um, but other than that, Pastor Dow, uh, I just wanted to just get my two cents in there and, uh, that's it, Pastor. I love you. I love all the same listeners and love all the same time straight with. Well, hallelujah. You get a chance to see your brother. Next time I see you, I may teach you how to uh, um, take a knife out of somebody's hand or disarm a knife or protect yourself in case somebody tries to attack you with a knife. It's good to know these skills. Yes, sir. All right. Good to hear from yes, you, Brother Asus. You be, you be encouraged, my brother. All right, Pastor. I love you. Love you, too. Shalom. It's off the chain. It, 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 it's literally off the chain. Literally off the chain to what we see happening and taking place right before our very eyes. Um, the country's in a serious decline. Can't y'all see that? It's just all there's to it. We're in a serious decline. Call the number 252. North Carolina's Pastor Dow. You know, Strictly Truth Radio broadcast. I may help you. Hello, Pastor. Shalom. Bless you, brother. Bless you. Uh, I wanted to share some news we had out in North Carolina. It was kind of shocking this week that uh, might help to wake up a few things out there. What you got, bro, Mike? 
Uh, our local news station here uh, in North Carolina went to the government and got a list of all the concealed and carry permit holders in the whole state and put a search file up on their website at WRL where you can go in and punch in an address or a zip code and they got a list of everybody that owns a permit down to the street level. Wow. They got a concealed and carry made it publicly available to everybody, all the criminals, everything. What what did they do that for? Uh, they said it was just so uh, people could could be aware for their own safety about who had these concealed and carries. And I was thinking to myself, you know, what a coincidence that we got that going on. You know, they're making it available. Everybody knows who's got these concealed carry weapons across my whole state. We got this mess going on out here at the movie theater and the FBI showing up before the local police do. You know, it's just a co amazing coincidence, isn't it? I tell you what, brother, that was shocking to me to know that here you are at old dark 30 in the morning, there's a shooting going on in a the movie theater, and the FBI shows up before the local police, brother. That 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 speak that stinks to high heaven, brother. To me, that that's called a staged event. It could be M2K Ultra Mind Control, CIA. I mean, a lot of people don't like to talk like that because, you know, they have told us, oh, it's just a conspiracy. Yeah, the conspiracy is, is they against us, the people. Well, I was just talking to somebody earlier today, and I said, you think about it. I said, the FBI don't roll around in patrol cars together. I said, that task force that responded had to come together, get dressed, get to a common vehicle, get armored, equipped, and show up. And he did that in minutes before the local police. And bro brother, I'm telling you. I believe it was staged, 100%, staged. Well, yeah, they, and, and you know, like I said, uh, I don't know if they're going to do it in every state, but here in North Carolina, like I say, it's, it's available right now. You can go out there and punch it up. I even called the news station because right now it doesn't have names, it just has addresses. And the local news station says they don't have any in Ken at the time to release names. Uh, but Bob, I mean, what, they, you know, there is no good cause to release that, that sort of information. So it has to be a nefarious motive. Not that they surprised me in doing that, but I thought I would share that with with everyone. But uh, just so they could be able to look out for it in their own state. You know what, brother Mike? I know, I know you're going to hear me on this one. You know, brother, I tell you, man, I, I think that I'm gone crazy. I think, brother, that I've got it wrong all this time. I'm going to adopt. I'm going to adopt a new paradigm. Government, I want y'all to hear me. Y'all are right. I think that, that we should sell our silver and gold to get fiat currency. I think that we should go back to worshiping Santa Claus and Sunday. Uh, I don't own no more guns no more. I believe that the government should protect me. I don't have another. I don't have a gun within 100 miles of me as of tomorrow. I'm getting rid of all my guns so y'all can leave me alone because I don't have anything else. I'm going to comply with everything you say because you're right. And I'm wrong. I can't think. I need help. I need somebody. I need the government to come in and be a part of every aspect of my life. I don't know where I'm coming or going. I'm totally illiterate. I don't have any sense. And so I'm going to trust y'all to protect me. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I see the logic in that. I, I, I wish our book allowed us to, uh, to, to, to tell that lie and get along. <laughs> get, go along get along. But, uh, Unfortunately, I ain't wired that way. You ain't either. But brother, I tell you what, it's uh, it's just amazing to see what they do. And like I say, that whole that whole FBI movie theater thing there, you know, uh, it, it shows just the brazen level of, of evilness. And that guy turns out he had something to do with Occupy Wall Street and all that. I mean, brother, that's a mess. I mean, you know, we're, we're told to expect it, but you know, it's still even though you see the train speeding off the bridge when it crashes, you still look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh boy, I tell you, brother. I, I tell you, brother Mike. It's um, it's it's a shame. It's a shame what has happened. Um, and believe it or not, you know just as well as I do. It's all stage. You know that. Yes, sir. All right, brother. Well, I will jump back in the uh, in the lifting mode and uh, uh, shalom. Bless all the saints and uh, bless all you out of strictly fans. All right, bless you, brother Mike. Shalom. Man, I tell you what, you know, brother Mike brings up some valid points, which is just literally off the chain. How did these people, how does the Fed show up? 
How do they show up? I know a lot of you people think, wait a minute, Pastor, are you supposed to be talking about straight with truth? Wait a minute, this is the first day of the week. I can talk about anything I want to. But how in the world do feds show up before the local police? Y'all don't think that's fishy? Something going to stink to high heaven? Hmm. You know what? Think about this. Before a person, and the theory 333, the 333 theory says, and he's right, he is correct. To buy canister gas, you have to have a FFL license or be law or military. So, hey, I believe that all this stuff that is going on right now, it is remarkable how all this stuff is going on just right before the UN treaty. I was talking with Sister Bonnie and Brother Roger today. You know what they told me? They said that Obama officially signed into law that all our water rights, maritime water rights, have been given over to the UN. See, see brother and sister, it's New World Order. They, they, it's, everything is going to globalism. Everything is going to globalism. Everything is going to globalism. Um, man. It's off the chain. We're going to California. Brother Chris, uh, Eric 951. Come on with it, brother Chris. Shalom, Pastor. This is Brother Chris. Yeah, come on, brother. Uh, I just had a couple questions. Oh, well, a question. Um, I have somebody who was listening on their blog talk right now. They may be a guest. Um, and uh, we were talking, and they had a, a question about the 144000 And, I mean, they know that they're at the 12000 from each tribe. But they were telling me that there were more than of those who were going to be in the kingdom, you know, due to the Bible saying that, that uh, you know, that they will be in uh, the sands of the sea. So can you just uh, give an explanation or a quick uh, uh, understanding of them so that they can hear it and understand uh, what it's referring to? Sure, that's not a problem at all. See, the one thing that people don't understand, Brother Chris, is that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mute you for a second while I answer this question, and then I'll bring it back up, okay? Yes, sir. One thing that, that a lot of people don't understand, Brother Chris, is that when they look at the Bible, they look at it through this mind right here, the way they've been trained and manipulated and coerced, and they process thought after a Western mentality as opposed to an Eastern mentality because the book is an Eastern book, so therefore it has to be interpreted from an Eastern perspective, from a Hebraic perspective, not a Christian perspective, or someone who was raised in America with American mindset. Now we got that cleared and out of the way, the understanding is this. You know, there sure is going to be a multitude when the king comes. There, there are going to be numbers the sands of the sea. But what people don't get and understand is, is how many people have passed on in the most high that's going to be coming back with him. I mean, Jesus even got to the point and said, when he comes, shall he find faith on his earth? I don't understand how we process thought and our logic and reasoning today because you start thinking about this. You know, the Most High Yah destroyed the earth and only left eight people alive during that time. That means everybody on the face of planet Earth was destroyed. You can, now we fast forward to the book of Revelations, and then there's going to be 12,000 that's going to be sealed out of each tribe, 144,000. So a jump from eight to 144,000 is an extraordinary jump that are going to be left alive of the tribes. That's going to be in the kingdom, the new Jerusalem. There's going to be heathens and everything still on the outside of the city. And there are going to be um, people who did not get killed in this war. When the Most High Yahweh, when Jesus comes back and he takes vengeance on this wicked, wicked earth because of what the people, the Edomites, the Adamiums have done to his people, Israel. Vengeance is his, and he's going to repay. Most people don't even know what he mean repay. What he's going to repay? He's going to repay for all the injustices that have been perpetuated against his evil, and how the nations have taken advantage and done evil and injustice against him, and they're going to pay for it. And America just happened to be one of those nations, along with the European nations, and they're going to pay greatly for it. So. When you look at all the people that has passed on, and there's 6.5 billion people on the face of planet Earth, there's a lot of people that died in the Most High that's going to be coming back with him. Then there's going to be 144,000 left alive, and so shall we ever be with the Most High. Hey, we don't know how many of that people there were, but I know one thing. We're going to be called up to meet him in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Most High. And when he comes back, he's coming back to this earth. You ain't going back to no glory. Heaven is wherever the Messiah is. Come on up, Brother Chris. 
Thank you so much, Pastor, for the understanding. I'm sure they heard it, and, uh, uh, and, and, and I just thank you. Yes, sir. You're welcome. Shalom. Shalom. Man, I hope you people start reading the Bible. I mean, I, I really truly do, and don't function after opinions and feelings and emotions and, oh, boy. Oh. I'm typing in something there for a minute. But I really wish uh, that people would get back to the book. I, I really truly do. Because there were a number that was sealed, and it was 144,000 out of the tribes of Israel. What is that saying? That's telling you all clearly that you've got to be Israel. Because all Israel shall be saved. There ain't nowhere in the book that says, and all Christians are going to be saved. Where do you read that at? They ain't nowhere that say all Muslims going to be saved. And that did don't say that. Can't y'all wake up? Man, how hard-headed can y'all be? Mercy. Whoo. Help us, Father. Let me go to the next call before I start going off here. Sister Rachel, down in Texas, Houston, Texas. Call number 832. Come on with us, sister. Hey, Pastor Dad, how are you doing? All right, daughter of Zion, how are you, lovely? I'm doing great. I just wanted to call in because I know you talked to Brother Mitchell yesterday, but we had truly an anointed such blessed weekend down here with the Saints this weekend uh, over at Sister Brenda's house. And I've got to say, the way the Most High is blessing us with these elders and their wisdom down here is, is just completely amazing. Just their years of experience and wisdom and doctrine and just everything they've learned to pass down to us, uh, the younger generation, is just, it's just been a great experience. And uh, I just want to say Sister Brenda is such a beautiful, strong woman of y'all, and she was a great host this weekend. She had a, you know, fit for a keen, and it, we just... We learned about our history as a people, you know, how it's been so whitewashed and she completely just turned our realities upside down with, with the truth and it was it was just a great time. We spent hours we didn't realize it was like seven o'clock at night and like we, we had to get up and leave. It just when you're with the saints, just time passes so quickly and I just wanted to call in and let you know about that. It's a beautiful thing, and I'm glad that y'all getting together. And Sister Brenda, I'm, I'm glad to keep hearing good reports from that sister like that because we need elders to help bring a balance in every home church because the home church is biblical. That's the renewed covenant scripture right there. And I'm glad that y'all enjoying this and that y'all learning. And Sister Rachel, that y'all got examples that y'all can look after and, and, and pattern yourself after because it's such a beautiful thing um, that all this is taking place. I'm glad and I'm happy for each and every last one of you, and I hope that the people would be able to see y'all as young people and the seriousness of your walk and the holiness that you've defined to show that hey, we all show that Yah is still on a throne and he lives and he exists and his power of the Holy Spirit is flowing through each and every last one of us. So I hope that here in these last days and hours that people can see our walk, see what we're doing and come to the knowledge of the truth as well. And I'm glad that you're enjoying yourself with the elders of the land down there, meaning the old mother, Sister Rachel. You keep growing, okay? All right, thank you very much. Have a great evening, sir. Shalom. Shalom. That is Sister Rachel and Israelitess. Hallelujah. Blessed daughter of Zion. And this is the truth. You know, brothers and sisters, I, you know, I hope, like, I'm going back to the pavilion. I hope that um, that we are um, uh, going to be finished with that pavilion tomorrow, which I think we may be. We might still have a little odds and ends because I looked for a fan today. I couldn't find any. So I'm going to go to Kentucky tomorrow to see if I can find some. Um, Gots, Gathering of the Saints. Um, August 29th, 30 and 31st. Um, believe me, you're going to have the time of your life. I need for you to start communicating. I need for you to start dropping your fees and everything in the mail. Uh, we're getting close to being less than one month away. And, and we need to have all this in hand, in place, so we can get logistically everything together to make your stay wonderful. We're going to be staying in tents. Did y'all hear me? We will be staying in tents. Did y'all hear me? We will be staying in tents. Hallelujah. And I hope that each and every last one of you would enjoy and, and have a, a beautiful time and a, and a good lesson to learn as you um, in, increase and hone in on your skills. Because uh, a lot of these things you're going to need. 
uh, for the upcoming times. You're going to need some of the things that we're doing and we're going to be talking about. Uh, myself, Pastor Fox, Brother Dave Mask, and Elder Doug. Uh, we're going to be giving some, some classes that you're definitely going to be interested in. You're going to need to know. Uh, and you need to be coming uh, with some type of recording device. You know, I found out one of the best recording devices it is, and it's very simple. I may get two more of these little things. You see this little Kodak Play Sport right here? It's waterproof. It's, it's, see, I got to get stuff that's simple. You push this button right here, start, stop, start, stop. Pretty simple. That's why you see me when we're doing recording of the, of the baptisms or when we're recording the pavilion. And stuff. I use this little thing. One of the best things that I've ever bought with a little bit of recorder besides going and buying a camcorder and, and hauling that thing around everywhere. This does the job just fine. And it's and you'll probably be out between 120 and 150 bucks. Best one, easy to operate. Easy. And it uses an SD card. Um, so you may want to come like that and, and you can get... You know what's amazing about these little things? See the SD card? You know what's amazing about these little things? Depending on the size of the card, you can get anywhere from two to four hours of record time. I need to stick a 32 gig uh, in here. I don't have a 32 gig in here. I know I got one somewhere. But just to see how much, because I know I get close to three hours on a 16 gig card of record time with this thing. And I tell you, it's just beautiful. Uh, is it the same kind? Sister Smith said they paid $89 for theirs on sale. And I'm telling you, this is a Kodak Play sport kodak play sport waterproof shockproof 1.5 millimeter hey, best little recording device I've, I've ever had best one i got one sitting up that ain't worth two dead flies i need to throw that thing in the trash can and matter of fact i'm gonna do it immediately after this broadcast glory to the king all right all right all right all right all right I don't know, brother jesus you're just up there you're asking to call in again brother jesus are you up again my brother Are you, Are you up again? Uh, no, I'm sorry. I was just listening on the uh, the uh, the phone. I'm sorry. Okay, I just noticed that um, your, the little sign was up. So, all right, shalom, brother. I'll let you go. All right, shalom, brother. Uh, Pastor Lord to the King. Um, but hey, that's how we use it for baptism. And I'm telling you, this little Kodak thing. That, don't I use this everywhere, Sister so Carol? It's a good one. Hand me that piece of crap up there. Let me see this one right here. This one is, this is a Sony. This is a Sony right here. And it has an HDMI slot and stuff. It has a, it has a, a little thing on here where you can, you know, record on the side and stuff. Uh, you can hook it up to the computer or whatever and stuff. Uh, but you see this is a Sony. Watch what I'm getting ready to do with this Sony. Throw it directly in the trash can wipe right where it belongs. It's a piece of trash. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. All right, all right, all right. Hey, I appreciate each and every last one of your prayers and support. I really do. You know, I really got to um, um, get up to, the, I think I may get in the New York area at the end of this year, but I, I really got to head up to the Washington State area. Um, the most high Yah has his people up there, and we got to see what's going on there. Hallelujah. Uh, hey. Yeah, it just says Kodak Sport, um, Sister Soldier. I'll let you look at it real close right here, okay? See what it looks like, Kodak Sport. And then this is what it looks like on the back. You can go to Best Buy and pick up one. I'm telling you, the best recording device, very easy to use, user-friendly, that I've ever had. And I've had a few of these things. You just see me get, just get finished throwing the Sony in the trash can. Um, this one's waterproof. Um, shock proof uh, you, that's what you see me recording the pavilion videos with as well as baptisms uh, this is one of the best best cameras I've, I've, I've had it's a really good one it really truly is hallelujah so that's why I suggest if you want to record classes you even got to look if you, if you go by your little small tripod you could set it up it even has a tripod thing at the bottom that you could sit See it right here? You can actually screw it into a tripod like you would a camera and just set it up and record. It's a beautiful thing. It really is. And, of course, you can get, you know, I'm sure they got, like, different generations or whatever you want to call it and stuff, you know. Um, matter of fact, Brother Steve just got finished um, 
putting it up. Sister Smith says in North Carolina, you can get eight hours of record time off of a 32 gig card. And that, you know, you're going to pay a lot for the card. Um, apparently they got a second generation one. Let me look on it here real quick because mine is old. Mine is old, old school knowledge. Well, it looks like the same. I don't know if it is the same. We'll see. It looks like the same. Well, I was looking at it until Best Buy decided they was going to refresh the screen. Let me see what happens. Um, yeah, it looks the same. That's the same one I got. <clears throat> uh, except there it says 1080p. Let me see what mine says. Autofocus. I don't see what it says 1080p on mine. Maybe it does, but it looks exactly the same. Waterproof, three millimeter map, it's the same one. Um, I wonder why theirs is up so high, $179. I guess that's how much I paid for it, but I'll tell you what, it, it's one of the best recording devices that I've had. It's a PlaySport ZX5, Kodak PlaySport second generation ZX5. I have mine in black. Okay. Uh, Brother Steve has a ZX3, $79. You can get it from Amazon. That link doesn't work. Anyway, hallelujah. But it's pretty good. All right, we're going to go to Florida and make this the last phone call of the evening. And Pastor Dow is going to get some rest. Uh, I actually had a good night's sleep, but then I turned around and woke up just as tired. Uh, Carol, did Brother Steve, Mom, make it home safely? Hadn't heard from her yet. Going to Florida, caller number 305 is Pastor Dow. You're on Straight with Truth Radio Broadcast. How may I help you? Hey, hey Pastor. Is there, how you doing? All right. How you doing, Brother Eric? I'm excited about life. Um, somebody got to say the uh, I, I got a question, actually. Now the questions regarding some relationships I'm involved with friends or that have your neighbors. Um, and this is basically what we got going on. We got... One brother asking me from an Israelite perspective, trying to do the Israelite thing, um, trying to understand the whole adultery upon divorce. Apparently he's married to a young lady who was previously married, so that question came up. That's number one. Number two, the gentleman that called you some time ago from my house regarding his marriage status. I sent an email to you a group update. The wife left, divorced him officially. Um, and so he stayed with the girlfriend. He wants to know how to get it right if he's not right. And third, I got a neighbor, 18 year old young man with an 18 year old quote unquote girlfriend who uh, picks my brain all the time, you know, several times a week regarding the whole Israelite message. Seems like he has a duty to hear what have you. He wants to do it right. Tried to get a wedding ring, a wedding ring this week. Kind of got a little bit of his took his money back. Um, he's not in a position necessarily to care for this woman. You know, she comes to his parents' house, he goes to her parents' house, and he's in that predicament. But these are three relationships, not a relationship that are trying to hear what I got to say from an Israelite perspective, but have questions about the whole marriage thing, trying to make sure that they're in rightful standings. What you got with that? Oh, boy, I tell you what, brother Eric, that, that is going to take me a, quite a long time to answer that question. And I tell you what we need to do, brother. We need to set up a time uh, the way you and I can actually go over this, brother, so we can handle each one of those situations and give sound, timely advice. Okay. All right. So, um, how about we set up a time, brother, that that you you um you call me. Um, what time is? It? How about you call me seven o'clock tomorrow evening? Can you do that? Uh, tomorrow evening, definitely seven o'clock Monday. Uh, let me see. Hold on. Let me see. I got a client at that time. Can I client? Well, let's make it. Um, let's make it at a time convenient for you. Um, Tuesday is a better. If, if that time is comfortable, comfortable for you, I can do a Tuesday. I just got a client tomorrow at six thirty, actually. Okay. Well, you know, I'll be in Bible so, study. I'll be in Scripture study Tuesday night. Oh, that's right. That's right. I'll be listening to you on that. Well, let's. Um, just, let's I mean, I can do. It, I can do it tomorrow if, if um, it's either. It'll have to be earlier because throughout the evening it'll be difficult. Um, and I want to give you a, you know, a undivided attention since I got these guys constantly on me about that. 
So, um, okay. I know you're going to get the provision. Um, Is this I mean, your... Besides that, that class situation, um, other than that, what's comfortable for you? Is this your cell phone number that you call me on? Yes, 24-7. I'll tell you what, if, if I don't contact you before then, brother, we'll shoot. How about shooting um, for, for some time? Um, I mean, what about... And I don't want to rush through it because this is something that's got to be answered in 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 detail. Um, okay. If I can't, if we can't re meet up tomorrow, brother, how about we we try to set an, set a time um, for Wednesday? Uh, definitely, Wednesday is good. Open um, during those times that that you that you're available at like seven p.m. Um, so, I make sure I make sure uh, you know that I make myself available where we won't get disturbed or anything. So. Well, I'm going to try to, um, I got to head out of town tomorrow, brother, and then I'm, I'm going to try to shoot, for, I'm going to try to contact you and talk to you before then. Okay, okay, perfect. All right, I'm, I'm definitely going to try. Uh, I'm looking pretty good maybe for uh, Tuesday for sure. All right, um, I got my cell phone 24-7, and once I realize it's you, I'll give you my undivided attention, I'll stop what I'm doing. It's just a little uncomfortable with the client. I just don't have that, that client schedule, so other than that, Whatever I got going on, I'll make sure to put it aside uh, to attend to your call. No, all right. But um, it, no, if you're taking care of business, go ahead and take care of that because the most high teachers not to be slothful in business. You just let me know if you're busy or not, and then give me a time to call you back that day when we do meet up. Uh, if there's nothing in parenting, I'll call you back, brother. All right, cool, cool. I'll look forward to it, man. All right, brother Eric Shalom. And we also talk about the other situation, too. All right, definitely appreciate you. Shalom, all right. Sam. Shalom, that's Brother Eric down in Miami, Florida, doing the work, doing the work, doing the work, doing the work. Hallelujah. He is doing the work, doing the work, doing the work, doing the work. Now, <clears throat> Brother Steve, that they have another one up here. It's called a, a variation parent, or uh, it's a Kodak Sport ZX3 HD waterproof uh, camera. And it's, they have it for seventy eight ninety five. So mine's a little bit more expensive. Mine's the HD kind. Um, oh, but you know that, hey, check this out. That same ZX5 that they had over at Best Buy for $178, they have it over at um, Amazon for $99. $99. So Amazon will be the place to go for you to get this and save you um, almost almost $100. Hallelujah, it's usually listed $159, but Best Buy have it for $178, but Amazon has the same exact camera for $99. And like I said, hey, you can get uh, eight hours of record time out. It'd be something good for you to bring, and, and um, hey, you would enjoy it. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. I am promise you, this is one of the best little things and best tools I had. Um, I even take this on trips. I did a lot of recordings. When you see me go to different meetings and stuff. I, I record different situations, baptisms. I mean, it's a beautiful camera. It really truly is. Glory to the King. All right, all right. Saints, I enjoyed y'all. I want y'all to all have a blessed week. Y'all keep me informed. Um, well, give me one more day, and I'll be back in office, and I'll start answering emails. I'll start answering mail, um, and I'll start trying to return phone calls as best as I can and get back in the loop. I appreciate each and every last one of you for giving me time um, to, to help get that pavilion fixed, get it built, me and the elders and the brother in here. When we get it done, I'll take my little trusty camera right here, and I will actually record. Hallelujah. This is what Sister Ashley been recording with. I will record the finished product and let you see what we've got done. I want each and every last one of you to have a blessed evening. Uh, Y'all pray for the saints of the Most High God that are heading back to South Carolina tomorrow. Uh, don't know when Brother Alex is heading back. Brother Alex may be staying with us for a little bit. Don't know what he's got going on because uh, Brother Alex is giving a class on Cobb building, which you probably want to be there. All right, I bless each and every last one of you. I want you all to be encouraged. And uh, Sister Smith, sometime when I call you, y'all need to learn how to answer y'all phone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah in North Carolina. All right, the King is coming. I love each and every last one of you. Y'all be encouraged. Go to my YouTube videos and watch those videos. Pass them around to people and tell them to wake the hell up and get out of this darkness at the end. Just wake up. 
Uh, I'll let y'all know when you get here as far as projects y'all going to be helping with. Bless you, Brother Scott, Sister Angelica. I love you both dearly. You already know that. The King is coming. Hallelujah. Bless you, Sister Carrie. Brother Ugly. Shalom. Uh-oh, look at him looking.